that know where to put the button, where to pull the string, and where to get out to get you on your nerves, lay aside all those sinners that do so easily beset you. And only then can you run with patience the race that is set before you. We're looking at three things here. Number one, number one is starting the race without attachment to old bosom sinners. You are starting the race to be born again, to repent, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Or you are starting the ministry, and you are starting the ministry with maximum consecration and concentration. Here is where we begin that we start the race without any attachment to the old bosom sinners. Number two, strengthening for the race, abandoning our own besetting sins. Number three is steadfast as reapers with acceptable affection for our beloved Savior. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at there at starting the race without attachment to old bosom sinners. It tells us in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Somebody said, show me five bosom friends of yours and i'll tell you you'll be number six what does that mean if all the five bosom friends close friends intimate friends influential friends in your life follow a particular path of sinfulness you'll be the number six you'll follow that same way if five of your bosom beloved friends are righteous and every time they get together you with them they with you they talk of righteousness you'll be number six you'll follow that same way the people you are intimate with and the people you give your mind, your heart, your ears to, you'll be like them. That's why if you want to run the race and run it effectively and run it victoriously and run it triumphantly until the end, you must make sure that you have people who will encourage you, who you will lift you up, who will pray with you, not the old bosom sinners. Let's look at number two there. Number two there, we're looking at strengthening for the race, abandoning own besetting sins. I want to tell you, nobody knows your own besetting sins as you do. The things that have repeatedly made you to backslide. The things that have repeatedly put your back on the ground. The things that repeatedly brought regrets and sorrow and suffering into your heart. Nobody knows that like you do. And since you know it more than everybody, don't wait for a pastor. Don't wait for a preacher. Don't wait for a counselor to say, my friend, don't you think that, <laughs> no, he doesn't think, he knows. He knows that this is the besetting sin. Anytime he has some privacy, anytime it's all by himself, he knows that this is what always brings him down. Have strength from the Lord. For the race and abandon your own besetting sins. We're looking at uh, Colossians chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 11. Colossians chapter 1, verse 11. 
strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness and then in verse 12 in verse 12 it says giving thanks unto the father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light he strengthens us so that we'll become partakers of the saints in light and then in verse 13 verse 13 says who has delivered us we must make sure we're delivered from that already when the, um, the setting sin comes that obsessive pollution when it comes not just cry 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 crocodile the tears and say lord i'll not do that again as for the grace of god pray stay there the sin will ruin your ministry it will ruin your life it will ruin your family it will ruin your chance of getting to heaven and so pray and so sit down there and kneel down there and say lord no preaching no other ministration this besetting sin must come to an end in my life and then he delivers you who has delivered us from the power of darkness and he has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in verse 14 verse 14 says in whom we have pray until your heart don't stop crying to the lord until you have the problem with many people is we hear so many messages we do not pray them through to have what we did not have before the victory we didn't have before the success we didn't have before we just pray pray and pray and uh, you know people say we mustn't go beyond five minutes in prayer what are you doing there kneeling down there and what are you doing there confessing something are you a sinner are you a backslider what's the problem with you you stayed so long don't worry about them that's what they always do they want to keep you in your weakness and so you continue until you have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin let's come to number three there number three there it's the steadfast you are steadfast as reapers with acceptable affection for our beloved savior he is our savior and he wants to make sure we have affection for him love for him if our love has grown cold if our love has dried up and we say but this is my duty if you don't see me there they'll be wondering what happened that's why you go to preach and this is my responsibility the people are waiting for me what if you are dry what if you are empty what if you don't have love what if your heart is filled with hatred and the lord says when you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that someone has urge against you the lord has urge against you leave your gift there and set you with the lord and have the love of god filling up your heart and then when the love of god the affection for the lord has filled your heart you can go forth in running the race in reaping the harvest because your heart is full of love beauty that makes a statement and what if uh, you know said some people are expecting you to come uh, and minister and then uh, something wrong in your life the life is upside down the setting scene uh, has ruined you but they're expecting you and you know the gimmicks you know the methods you know what to say you know how to begin you know how to stand you know how to smile and you know how to talk like a preacher but you are down what do you do well i see go and preach no 
You must go back to the Lord and let the Lord fill your heart with his love, with his affection, with the truth you ought to have before you go there. Some years ago, this were my SU days, Scripture Union days. I, I had a particular preacher friend. That man was effective. Sometimes I look at him and I say, if I could be like this, my colleague, like my brother. He used to tell me a lot of testimonies, but he made a wrong step. He did something in he shouldn't have done. He knew it. It got him down. And somebody was in the hospital, and the fellow was bedridden sick. And they knew that they had the gift of healing. And so they called on him. They said, brother, brother, this person had such a sickness. It's just there. The doctors cannot do anything. Come, 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 come. Come and pray for him. And he knew that his heart was not right with God. He told me himself. He got to the hospital. He saw the man lying down there, helpless. His heart told him, what are you going to do? You're going to offer that dead sacrifice to the Lord. You know that you are a backslider. He didn't talk to anybody, but he spoke to me. He knelt down at the lower side of the bed. And as he knelt down, the sick man was expecting a prayer, dynamic prayer. Lay hands on me. I am dying. And my friend knelt down, praying quietly, confessing his own sin. Lord, my love for you, my dedication to you has waned. I need your love. I, I'm not for public ministry. I want your love to be reintroduced into my life. And then he prayed. He had the assurance. He said, thank you, Lord. I know you are forgiving me. Thank you, Lord. I know things are all right between you and I. And he stood up. As he stood up, the sick man stood up. Healed. Healed. If I was in Nigeria, they were clap. You know, the Lord is not waiting for our shouting, for our binding, for our loosing. He's waiting for us to have affection for him. And when we have affection for him, he will do what only he can do. You. Look at John chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 15. In John chapter 21, verse 15. So when they are dying, Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than this? He says unto him, Yea, yes, Lord. Thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs. We must have that assurance of affection for God, love for Christ, and love for his people before our ministration can amount to anything in the sight of the Lord. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, laboring with the begotten son to restore everlasting righteousness. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, number one, it's a looking unto Jesus with, while restoring to righteousness. Number two, laboring like Jesus, reaping forth, reaching forth to the regions, the regions beyond. Number three is leaning on Jesus in readiness for his return. 
Number one, we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus. Isn't that what I need to do? What you need to do every time? Look at the storm. Not looking at the storm. Looking at Jesus and looking unto Jesus. Look at the accusers. Others is saved. He could not save himself. Come down from the cross. I will believe you. What do I do? Do I come down from the cross? The Father, Heavenly Father, sent me to that cross. And I need to be looking up unto him. The people that are saying, come down. If I come down, there's no way they can be saved or the world can be saved. Looking up unto Jesus. What did he do? When they accused him, when they showed hatred to him, when they persecuted him, what did he do? Look at the steps, walking in his steps, looking unto Jesus. Any situation you find yourself, any condition you find yourself, you're in the midst of the people who love you, uh -uh, don't you place your love inside that, looking unto Jesus. You're, you're in the midst of the people that hate you and you can see from the action, from from their face and from everything don't look at them looking at them we're just weakening you looking unto jesus any condition any situation you find yourself if you're going to be victorious in the world the lord has given to you to do it says looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith ah now i understand when I look at the enemy, my faith goes down. When I look and I think of the detractors, my faith will go down. And when I look at the people that don't want me to succeed anyway, my faith will go down. When I turn my eyes away from them all, and I look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, then my faith will stand firm, will stay firm, and will stay steadfast. As it says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. When I look unto Jesus, I'll be able to endure the cross. When I look at the people there and there, then the strength to endure the cross will not be there. I'm thinking they are so powerful. I'm thinking they are so mighty. I'm thinking they are, they are so bold. They are able to destroy my faith. But when I turn my eyes away from them, in my mind, in my heart, in my emotion, in my memory, everything, I'm looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus will lift you up in Jesus' name. We're looking at number two there. Number two there, we're laboring like Jesus. Laboring like Jesus. Laboring like Jesus. How did he labor? He went from city to city preaching the gospel. City to city. The house they lived there when he was in that city, was not exactly like the house over there, and yet he went from city to city. The food he ate there, not the same as the food he ate over there, and yet he kept on laboring. The people that were sick, the sick people here were not the same as the sick people there, and yet he went from city to city. And even when he had his greatest pain, he had been in Gethsemane, and he prayed, and drops of blood were coming from the broken heart, oozing out from the body. And now, somebody wanted to cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest, laboring like Jesus. That fellow actually, uh, you know, they, they already arrested him. And Jesus took down and picked up the ear and stuck it back there, working a miracle, even for the people that were there to destroy him. 
and I'm laboring like Jesus. That's where sanctification, holiness of heart comes in. That instead of praying, God, destroy them. Destroy them. They must not live. Look at what they're doing to your beloved son. And they're doing this. And yet, when he got to the cross, the, the prayer he prayed for them, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They do not know that what they have done, the crucifixion, will result into the salvation of multitudes in the world, in all generations. They don't know. They don't understand. Forgive them, Lord. That's how Jesus labored unto the final end. And the angels who thieves who are arguing about him. He's a bad man. He's a sinner like us. Why are you talking like that? This man is just he did nothing wrong he died because this is the plan of god for him and then he turned to the lord and he said jesus remember me when you come to your kingdom no hatred in his heart no animosity in his heart no bad ill feeling in his heart today thou shalt be with me in paradise and then uh, the man did not even have water baptism the man did not have chance to take holy communion the man did not have any chance to give testimony to anybody the man did not have any chance for the grace that came to him uh, to do any good work and yet jesus took him uh, to heaven how do i labor and when I labor, with what mind, with what attitude, with what disposition, with what emotion do I labor? We labor like Jesus reaching forth to the regions beyond. And it's when we do that, we're totally in Christ, conditions around don't bother us. The situation around does not bother us. Mark chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 37. Mark chapter 1 verse 37 and when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. Verse 38 in verse 38 and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Verse 39. In verse 39, and he preached in their synagogues. The Pharisees were always there. You know, sometimes if you have encountered the Pharisees, and they have hindered you this way and hindered you that way. And they have even tried to intimidate you so that you will not come anywhere the Pharisees were to preach anything. And then if you're going to labor like Christ, where those Pharisees are and where those Sadducees are, where those opposers are, where those intimidators are, you are eager to go back there again. And to go and see there the grace of God, the power of God, and the offer of salvation to everyone in those synagogues. He went throughout all Galilee and he cast out devils. We're looking at number three now. Number three, leaning on Jesus for readiness for his return. Leaning on Jesus. We won't get saved by ourselves. We needed to lean on Jesus. We couldn't get sanctified by ourselves. We needed to lean on Jesus. If we couldn't get saved by ourselves, we cannot make the rapture by ourselves. We need to keep on leaning on him for every experience, and for every victory and for every triumph, we need to keep on leaning on Jesus and then to be ready for his coming. 
ready for the rapture, ready for his return. We need to keep on leaning on him every day, any day, because he may come in the morning, he may come in the evening, he may come at noon, at night, and because he'll come, and he's not going to announce to us the time, the day of his return, we lean on him every time so we can be ready for his return. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. He that shall come will come. They will not tarry and we're leaning on him so we can be ready anytime he comes. Matthew chapter 24, reading from verse 44. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as she think not the Son of Man cometh. And if we are beating a fellow servants, if we are ill-treating a fellow servants, if we are tormenting a fellow servants, and then he comes, how are we going to be ready? But he says, therefore, be ye also ready, the sage, be ye also ready, the holy, be ye also ready, the vigilant, be ye also ready, effectively, effectually resist every temptation. Be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. That which ye have already holds fast. What do you have? Salvation, redemption, freedom from sin, victory over the besetting sin, and victory over the weights that will tie you down. What is it you have? The holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for only they shall see the Lord. Hold that fast. The vision of his coming and the spirit telling you, behold, he comes. Hold that vision fast until he comes. Don't let anything anyone take the salvation the sanctification the holiness the redemption the faith you have in god and the confidence you have in god and the trust you have in god don't let anyone take the conviction that he is coming don't let anyone any friend take that away from you but that which you have already Hold fast till I come. In verse 26, he that overcometh and keepeth my works, the work I gave him to do, and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. We're looking at chapter 22. Revelation 22, I'm looking at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. It will be so sudden, you'll not have any chance to prepare yourself. Behold, I come quickly, coming very soon. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Verse tells us in verse 13, in verse 13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14, it says in verse 14, blessed are 
they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city verse 15 in verse 15 it says for outside outside without are the dogs you know the dogs you don't mind who is there they're back anyhow you know the dogs they don't mind who is watching they mate together right on the street there you know the dogs they fight on the bulls and it doesn't matter you know what other dog is there their own is to get the bone are you looking for the bones in life are you looking for the pleasures of the dogs on the street and then you forget that your lord is coming it says without outside of the dogs and the sorcerers and the allmongers and the murderers and the idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie in verse 16 verse 16 says i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david and the bright and morning star verse 17 it says, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. What a great privilege we have still today and this morning uh, that the grace of God is still available. Come and take freely. That the mercy of God is still available. Come and take freely. That the power for ministry and the power for victory and success still available. Let him come. Whosoever is a thirst, a thirst for the water of life, a thirst for the river of life, a thirst for the power to live in victory victorious life and, and a thirst for the victory the success we need to have in ministry it said the spirit and the bride are saying come and then it says let him that hear us say tell other people come and everyone that was thirsty for the fountain of living waters and for the power of God that will hold you on to the very end Every time you step up to the grill, you got to deliver. And flavor is the last thing you have to worry about. Because no one flavors like we flavor. Grillmates. Flame and flavor. A thirst for the water of life, river of life, grace for life, power for life. Let him come and take it freely. It's available for you today. It's available for everyone today. And the Lord will fill you to overflowing in Jesus' name. Whatever the past, the present can be transformed. And the future will be brighter and better and greater and higher than the past in Jesus' name. Come and take the river, the water of life freely. It is for you. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. It's available. Come for your own portion. The Lord is waiting for us to stand up, pray, and receive from the Lord. What a privilege we have this morning. What a message we've had this morning. Running the race while reaping the harvest.
We can't leave the race alone and think of reaping the harvest without the life. No labor will be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. The life first before the labor. The life, the life. How is your life? Not in the presence of men, before God, who see it, your heart. Who knows everything about your heart, about your life. He weighs your labor according to what he knows of your life. Your life, very important. Identify the weights. Because you have to lay them aside. There is no way. The type of race we have, you cannot run it with weights, heavy weights on your conscience, your mind, troubled, disturbed, worried, anxiety, passionate about things that do not pertain to the life of a servant of God, of a minister, of a professional that will make you to excel. Once there is weight, you're already defeated. And we must identify those weights. Lay them aside. Recognize them. If you don't even know them, how are you going to lay them aside? Challenge yourself to the career you want. Challenge accepted. Purdue University Global. Affordable online education for driven working adults. Apply now at purdueglobal.edu. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Fireside Chat. What number are we up to? Do we even know? 285. 285. That is not Megan's voice. It's not Megan's arm. Yes. Where is Megan? She's on vacation? That's true. Yes. She is taking a vacation? That is so wrong. Very wrong of her. Oh. I'm, I'm so been working. Pray that the Holy Spirit should destroy every work of the devil. God's people should break every chain and bring them here. Pray. 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 Let heaven hear you. And when heaven hears you, heaven will answer. Jesus said we should knock. We should ask. We should seek. Therefore, let us knock. Let's knock the doors of heaven. That we need the people here. We want this place to be filled up tonight. Whatever activity or engagement is holding them back, God should release them. In Jesus' name we pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance will be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel.
this was a prayer request from Paul to the brethren in Ephesus. We are also going to pray for our general superintendent, the convener of GCK. Let's pray that God will use him mightily tonight. Pray for him. God has been using him, but tonight should be extraordinary. Yes. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. Whatever we want to see done in this place will be determined by the prayer we'll pray. So pray for the pastor. God should use him mightily. Beyond what do we think. Beyond what we hope for. Yes. Let believers pray for the man of God. Let people gathered here pray for the man of God. The man of God is our prayer. Let's call upon heaven. The heaven should release anointing and power upon our pastor tonight. Pray. 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 Continue praying. Never get tired. We are interceding for our pastor. In the vessel God is going to use tonight, pray that God will strengthen the vessel. God will fill him with his power. That the manifestation of God's power will be demonstrated in this ministration tonight. Fervent prayer for the pastor. For the pastor. For the minister. For God's vessel, God should fill his vessel. He should anoint the pastor tonight. God's fullness should come upon him. In Jesus' name we pray. And his fame went throughout all Syria. 
And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with these diverse diseases and torments. And those who were possessed with devils. And those which were lunatic. And those that had a palsy. And he healed them all. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what's going to happen tonight. Amen. We are going to call upon the Lord. That Jesus have mercy on all who are coming here tonight. God should have mercy on everyone. Pray. It's a merciful Lord. A compassionate God. Call upon him. Many are here with their problems. With diverse problems. Some are on the way coming. The Lord. The merciful God. The compassionate Jesus. Should have mercy on everyone. Whoever comes here. And whoever opens the mouth to pray. Crying to Jesus to be healed, to be set free. God should do it tonight. Tell the Lord. Jesus should have mercy on everyone. Someone cried in the Bible and said, Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus showed him mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, and he healed them all. So tonight, all problems should be rolled away. Hallelujah. No problem should stand the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's open our mouth and pray. We have divert needs. That's why we are here. But whatever challenge you have, whatever afflictions you are going through, we are going to tell the Lord to roll away everything today, tonight. Open your mouth and pray. Let God hear your voice by opening your mouth and praying. Open your mouth and pray. Let God hear you. We are in their need for solution to all our problems.
let us pray. Let us cry unto him. Bartimaeus cried to Jesus. He cried to Jesus. And the Lord hearkened unto his request. God heard his cry. So let us pray. Let us cry unto him like Bartimaeus. Our problem has been with us for long. God must do it before we live here. Tonight is a night our problem should be rolled away. Tonight is a night our problem should come to an end. So let's behave like Bartimaeus. Let's behave like Bartimaeus. Behave like Bartimaeus. He cried, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me, have mercy on me. And the attention of the Lord was drawn to him. Cry unto him. Let's cry unto him. Look at what the devil has done in the lives of many people here. Cry unto him. He will hear our cry. He will come down to deliver us. He will come down to set people free. He will come down to destroy the works of the devil. Let's cry unto him. Many blind people are here. Blind people are here. Let's cry unto him. Cry unto him. Tonight, miracles you are bound. Miracles you are bound tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says, angels in heaven rejoice when a soul gets saved. We are going to pray. Let's pray and thank the Lord for having answered our Mighty Father, we thank you tonight. You've been with us since last Thursday. And we know that tonight also you are with us. Lord, let your presence be mighty with us in Jesus' name. We pray for your guidance. We pray that the Holy Spirit we use all vessels where the choruses, ministers who pray, ministers who, minister who will sing, use everyone to bring deliverance for your people. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to continue. We will go before God. And we'll be worshiping him. We'll be pouring out our hearts to him. And through our songs, we'll pray to him that he would fill us up. Today is the last but one day. And we do not want to lose our blessings. We want to call down the presence of the Lord. We want to call down the presence of the Lord. To come and move in a mighty way in our lives. To come and touch us. To come and fill us up. 
And so join us anywhere that you are. Lift up your hearts, lift up your hands, lift up your voices, and bless the name of the Lord with us. To God be the glory, great things He has done, so loved He the Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for the things that could not satisfy. But then I heard my Savior speaking, draw from my well that never shall Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for all those things that could not satisfy. But then I heard my Savior speaking to draw from my well that never shall run. If you're thirsty today, let me hear you say, Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench. Hey, this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Fill me. Fill my cup. 
are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things can't afford but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord so fill my cup Lord fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my touched me oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul something happened something happened and now Hallelujah. Lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Come bless the Lord. O ye servants of the Lord. Who stand by night. In the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Everybody, when we pray, when we pray in the name of Jesus, tell me who, tell me who has what the power sickness has the power to oppose. In the name of Almighty. We have the victory in, in the, the name, name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of we Jesus. Are the, we have the victory over oh, sickness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Since I will have to come. When we pray. When we pray in the name of Jesus. In the word of God, 
There is power in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Let's say, in the word of God, there is power oh, in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. In the word of God, there is power in the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. In the word of God, there is power. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Hey. In the word of God, there is power. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine, they are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine, they are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. Come on and claim it. I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. The blessings are Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are. Abraham's blessings are mine. They are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. GCK Global, amen. Let's remain standing as you want to go to the Lord in prayer. Let's the Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. We have cause to bless the Lord, who redeemed thy life from destruction. God has been gracious in redeeming the lives of several of us from destruction globally. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. God has been good to us. Let, let us bless him briefly for what he has done and for what we know he will do today. And as we get to the last day tomorrow, we know that Ghana will never remain the same. Let's worship the Lord. <laughs> and the blessings of the Lord will flow globally in Jesus' name. <laughs> I need your amen. Father, we are most grateful to you because of what you have been doing since this wonderful program took off on, Tuesday, on Thursday. We give you all the glory. There's no way that we can quantify all you have done for us. Your blessings are uncountable. We are grateful for the weather. We are grateful for how you have kept all distractions away from the program. 
Thank you because of all the souls that you have saved. Thank you for all the, the, all, all the diseases you have healed. We know this is your own dream. We pray you accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And we thank you because what you did yesterday, you have the power to do today. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And therefore, Lord, we welcome you into our midst once again. Holy Spirit, take care of all that we shall do during this crusade tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that fresh anointing will be upon your servant, the convener, our Father and the Lord, in Jesus' name. Your mercies are new every day. We pray that through him, Lord, by your power, your mercies will flow all to all your people here and all over the globe in Jesus' name. Due today, much more than you have done since we started. Due today, much more than you have done since the GCK took up in Jesus' name. Fill every mouth with testimony. We thank you because we know you have answered. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And people said, Let's remain study as we want to take our congregational hymn at Calvary. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Oh, the love that do salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty God that God span at Calvary. Mercy there was great, and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There, my body and soul found liberty at Calvary. Will sing all the stanzas. of blessing. <laughs> Please pardon me. We'll take rather there shall be showers of blessings. There shall be showers of blessing. This is a promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing saints from the Savior above. There shall be showers of blessing, if we but trust and obey. There shall be seasons refreshing, if we let God have his way. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, we'll take all the stanzas.
Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain, flowers of blessing. Show us of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O Lord. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, if we but trust and obey. There shall be seasons refresh. If we let God have his way, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we Hello everyone, I am Joseph Gere from Hungary, a pastor from Hungary, and for me it's a great privilege that uh, Pastor Dr. Kumui asked me to share uh, in this prayer meeting, and uh, I greet everyone, all my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and it is great to be together as uh, children of God as uh, uh, the member of God's kingdom and citizen of God's kingdom uh, that we are together to pray and asking God together for a different subject. My subject is based on the scripture place, Matthew 24, 14. Uh, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Uh, before this, Jesus was uh, speaking, speaking about the uh, birth pain of this word, about earthquakes and uh, 
uh, famines and a uh, uh, lot of bad things which uh, is, uh, has to be happened. It is, uh, Jesus told that it is uh, not just a suggest suggestion, but uh, Jesus told that it has to be done this way. It will be this way. And we cannot avoid this, and the whole world cannot avoid this. But in the same time, uh, he told that this gospel, this uh, uh, good news will be preached everywhere in all nations. And uh, because Jesus told this, that uh, the gospel will be preached, it will be done. And uh, we are part of this. Uh, God entrusted us to uh, proclaim the gospel personally, individually, uh, one by one as Christians, but also corporately as the body of Christ and using every type of uh, uh, instruments uh, to reach the people. And uh, in the whole uh, world's history never was uh, this situation that through the TV and through the uh, uh, modern technology, uh, internet, uh, we can reach the people with the gospel. And so it shows that uh, this Matthew 24 speaks about uh, our time. And that's why we have to pray uh, that uh, the gospel really be spread and uh, be um, um, proclaimed to every nation. And I call you to, pr uh, to pray together and uh, just we have to lift up our hearts and hands toward God and ask him. Father, we ask you to bless uh, every one of us uh, individually. Uh, let the gospel burn in our hearts and let we uh, uh, preach your gospel using every type of uh, uh, instrument and possibilities and opportunities what you give us and uh, uh, we bless all the nations and we ask uh, open hearts of the people uh, to receive the gospel and thank you jesus that you promised us that the gospel will be preached in for every nation and this is done this is your will uh, this is what you told and what you told it is exactly true and we want to be part of this big commission and please uh, use your people in jesus name we ask you father amen dear brothers and sisters uh, now we will pray for the countries who are still uh, closed or blocked uh, before the gospel and we know that god who is the uh, ruler of the history can change in one second the whole chess table of the humanity uh, globally and he can rearrange everything and uh, he can raise up good leaders and put down bad leaders this is our god and you know i was uh, living under the communism for decades and i know what it means uh, that the gospel wasn't uh, allowed to preach freely and uh, we were persecuted and i know that among the audience a uh, lot of you are persecuted uh, literally physically threatened and uh, uh, i was too in this uh, 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 place and i know what it means but god can change in, in one second everything and uh, uh, when i was a young christian uh, i was praying let the gospel be uh, preached uh, freely in this country and uh, uh, god did a real miracle and the iron curtain collapsed and the gospel now is spread in the former uh, soviet countries you know and uh, 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 praise the lord hungary has a, um, a very good government a, a christian national conservative government who helps a lot uh, all over the world for uh, the uh, persecuted Christians. And God can change everything. And that's why we, we pray with faith, let God destroy this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, opposition 